Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Now about a month ago I received a very nice donation from Bruce Allen which was a huge box of Action Man bits. Now in that box there were three uh, Action Man figures and a whole selection of outfits and from that box I've decided that I'm going to do a bit of a restoration on a couple of outfits. Now the figures I have already restored uh, these were fairly simple sort of uh, restorations because the figures themselves were actually in reasonable condition they just needed a good clean and and some new hands applying. So uh, the figures you see here in front of me are two of those figures from that box. Now what I've decided to do is to restore a couple of the German uh, outfits that were in that box. There was a German staff officer and a German stormtrooper. Now as you can see here I put the basic outfits on these two figures and initially it looks like they're not in too bad condition. I have to say the one on the right is actually in a pretty reasonable condition but the one on the left has a few little issues with it. Some of the uh, stitching has come undone and as you can see it's also got some folds in it so it needs a little bit of ironing. But really the main problem with these uh, two figures is all the accessories. Uh, they all need a little bit of work so that's really what we're going to be working on today because I've previously shown you how to fix uniforms so there's no point in me covering that again. Now the two uh, sort of big issues uh, with these figures are actually the hats. Uh, the the two hats that came in the box are here. You can see this is the staff officer hat and at some point uh, this hat has been painted because if you look inside it it's a sort of darker sort of uh, well more sort of bluey green and on the outside it's been painted this green to match the uniforms. You can see that it's just sort of chipped away slightly and the original paint is underneath and the same has been done to uh, the uh, stormtrooper helmet as you can see here. Now this has a couple of stickers on either side uh, and it's been painted the green. If we turn it over you can see it should be that sort of grey colour on the inside. So really these two both need a bit of restoration to get them looking how they would do originally. I've actually had a look in my sort of spares pot and I found I do have a couple of other Stormtrooper hats but you can see this one is missing the stickers and this one is missing the little sort of attachment pieces on the inside. So I'm also going to show you how to uh, fix those as well today. The first thing I'm going to deal with is the paint on the hats. Now obviously this uh, staff officer hat has other paint on it because it's got some black paint, some silver paint and a bit of red on the front there. But we just want to remove the green paint on the top. Now I'm not really sure what this paint is because it's quite rubbery and doesn't crack much. But I'm hoping it's just some sort of old enamel -y, uh, sort of acrylic type paint maybe, possibly acrylic I think, just judging by the look of it. So I think we're going to be able to remove that using brake fluid. Now I've shown you this before in previous videos. If you've watched my ultimate challenge video on restoring an action man that was painted red you saw how well this worked. Now this is just brake fluid. This is dot four cheap stuff that I picked up at Halfords uh, which is a UK shop and all we're going to do is dunk the hat into the dot four. Now I don't really want to submerge all of this. I'm hoping if I just put it sort of on the bottom of a pot I can just get some uh, brake fluid up around the edge here so hopefully it won't sort of damage too much of the other paint. If it does then we'll deal with that uh, but really I just want to remove that paint first. Now again the uh, Stormtrooper hat has the same issue. It's covered in paint but this has some stickers on it and I don't think there's going to be any way of saving these stickers once we've dumped that in the brake fluid. So I'm just going to accept that they will get uh, ruined and we'll replace them. Now obviously I do have a hat here I could use just straight out of the uh, sort of bag of my spares but really it's more fun to try and restore this one. So we're going to do both of these. Now I'm going to do uh, the, the uh, staff officer hat first because that's going to use less of the brake fluid. Now this is the brake fluid that I used before so you'll notice when I pour it out into the pot it has a slight red tinge to it and that's because it has a little bit of the paint residue left over from uh, when I cleaned up the painted red Action Man. So I'm going to just put a small amount in the bottom and then drop this hat in and hopefully it will sink enough. Yep, that's almost exactly what I wanted that just the bit uh, that has been painted is sort of in the brake fluid. Now I'm going to leave that for about an hour and then I'll come back and see what's happened to it. Hopefully the paint will have started to sort of come away from the plastic and I could just rub it off with some kitchen towel. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see because until you know what sort of paint this is you don't know what's going to happen to it. So let's leave that and in the meantime I'm going to take the outfit off this other action man here and give it a good wash because this is the one that's sort of got a few little things that need some work doing to it. So the first thing I like to do is wash those and it makes it a lot easier to deal with because everything lies nice and flat. So let's wait for this and I'll get the outfit washed. It's now been about an hour so I can check uh, what's going on with this paint as uh, 
it should have started to have something going on. Really the uh, brake fluid works pretty quickly on this stuff if it's going to work. So just take it out. I've got a bit of kitchen towel here. I'm just going to move this onto my cutting mat so I don't get too much paint everywhere. And we can start to sort of rub it with the kitchen towel and see what happens. And you can see immediately that the uh, paint is coming off, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'm just going to rub away until I can get most of this off and we'll see what's left, see if it needs a second dunking. I also have a cotton bud here to the side which I can use to sort of get into some of the awkward places the kitchen towel won't get into it. As you can see it's really done a pretty good job already. Most of it seems to come off and actually the original paint isn't shifting so that's a that's a good sign. You can see that's uh, made quite a difference. Yeah and it really isn't taking off the original paint. Maybe a little bit of the silver but the uh, black is staying put. As you can see that's actually made quite a big difference. I'm just going to go and give this a quick wash in some hot soapy water and use a toothbrush to see if I can get out some of the bits in the sort of more awkward little areas around there. But I think overall that has done a remarkably good job. There's a few little bits as you can see just stuck in some of these grooves. I can actually just get that out of a fingernail but I think a, a, a toothbrush and some hot soapy water uh, will make that much easier to do. So let's get that last bit cleaned and then we can move on to the Stormtrooper helmet. A quick wash later and you can see it looks almost as good as new. I've managed to get all of the green paint off and it's not really made any difference to uh, the black paint or the silver paint. There may be a little bit of wear on the sort of insignia there on the front but that could have been worn before I stuck this in the uh, brake fluid. So I think uh, that is a very good result and I'm really happy with how that's come out. So I'm really hopeful now for the uh, Stormtrooper helmet. Now obviously this has stickers on as I said I'm not really that worried about those because if they get damaged they get damaged. There's not a lot I can do and they've actually been painted over. So I'm going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to put this into the brake fluid. I will leave on all of the little bits of elastic because uh, I think I'll probably replace those anyway uh, and we'll just see what happens. I'm hoping it removes the paint and maybe we'll get the stickers left. They may be stained. If not we'll replace those stickers. So let's put this in the brake fluid as well. I'm going to need slightly more brake fluid for this one because obviously the uh, hat is a lot deeper. So I'm going to pour in the rest of this brake fluid that I have here and I think we're just going to have to dunk the whole thing in and also get it filled up with the brake fluid so it sinks to the bottom because obviously you want it to be completely submerged. So again about an hour and we'll come back to that one. It's actually only about 10 minutes later. I just thought I'd give this a quick check and it looks like the paint is already coming loose. You can see here if I rub it with my finger it's sort of you can see the grey underneath. So in an effort to save these stickers I'm going to immediately take this out of the uh, brake fluid. Just drop it onto a bit of kitchen towel again and uh, see how much I can rub off. And you can see it's quite a lot. It is already loose so that's a really quick turnaround. So I'm going to go take this downstairs and wash it in the sink with some hot soapy water and hopefully that will mean these stickers are saved. I don't have to uh, get replacements for them. So let's quickly give this a wash and we'll see what happens. Well sometimes you can be amazed when doing a restoration and today is one of those cases. This is the helmet with all of the paint removed and even the stickers have survived. Now I really didn't expect them to sort of get past the process of sort of being dunked in the brake fluid but as you can see they have. I've given this a good wash just in a bit of hot soapy water as well and they even survived that. So that just shows what good quality stickers they were back uh, in the 60s and 70s. They've really lasted and uh, yeah still look pretty good today. So that was one restoration I was sort of expecting to do replace the stickers. I'm still going to do it because obviously I have these two other helmets here that are broken and I also want to show you how to fix these sort of little uh, broken tabs on the side of these helmets. So I'm still going to do that but that is pretty amazing that uh, the helmet has survived all that time and been dunked in brake fluid and still come out 
well, pretty much as good as new. Inside the helmets, you'll notice there are these little sort of uh, clips or lugs or little hook things. I don't really know what they're called, but it's where the uh, strap for the helmet is attached. And quite often with these old helmets, they are missing or broken, as you can see here on this uh, helmet. This one is snapped uh, and the one on this side is missing. But luckily you can now get replacements of these. So here's a small bag of them. Now I purchased these from the Vintage Action Man Restored website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this videos and you can get these in a, a number of colors so I picked up a few in green and a few in gray obviously I need a couple of, of gray ones for this and these are modern casts of the uh, little sort of hooks so you can see they match pretty well the color matches it's not perfect but it certainly will do the job and as this is inside the helmet it's not going to be a problem and these we need to glue inside like that you can see that's it uh, going to work pretty nicely once that's in place. So what we've got to do is actually remove the remnants of this last one here on the uh, left side that's a little bit sort of snapped and broken. So I'm just going to use my plastic nippers and hopefully I can sort of just crack the glue because the glue should be quite brittle now that it's this old. There you go and that's removed the old one and now we can glue the new ones in place. I'm just going to use a small amount of super glue to uh, put these inside the helmet. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of super glue onto the sort of the longer arms of uh, this little piece. You can see here it's got sort of a longer end. And then I can uh, just drop these in place and use the sort of the markings of the old ones as a guide as to where they should go. And I'm using tweezers just because uh, these are pretty small pieces. And as you can see, that's glued in quite nicely. So I'll do the one on the other side and then we can replace the little uh, cord that goes around to hold the helmet in place. And again, I've done this before and I've shown it in the video. So it's just going to be a bit of elastic, sort of three millimeter flat elastic. And I'll sew it at each end just to keep it nice and neat. So I've just sewn one side of the elastic on already. And this is the elastic I use. You can pick this up off eBay. This is a three millimeter flat black elastic and you need it uh, for a lot of restorations when you're uh, working with Action Man stuff. It's used all over the place. And really you can just tie this stuff on, but I prefer just for, to make it sort of look neat uh, to do a couple of little stitches on either side. It just makes it look sort of more professional and uh, I think more sort of like it would have been originally. Obviously the original uh, helmets did actually have a little metal catch on one side so you could unhook it uh, and I think you can buy reproduction ones of those but I have to say I don't bother because I think sewing it is uh, fine and you can still easily take the helmets on and off uh, just by sort of hooking the uh, strap under the chin so uh, I think this way works just as well and it just keeps it looking a little bit sort of neater. So you can see I've got the uh, Bit of elastic in place just going to trim off the sort of loose ends of the thread and also I've left the elastic a little bit uh, long there just so that I can work with it so I can trim off that end again just with a pair of scissors and you can now see we have a helmet that now has the replacement little sort of hooks in place and the new elastic and that will fit nicely on Action Man's head and while I'm doing all of this work I'm also going to fix some goggles that I've uh, managed to uh, trade with uh, Joe Haynes. Now these are the goggles for the Staff Trooper and again always the case with these that the elastic is missing and it uses the same elastic so I'm just going to sew some of this on and make a new strap and that can go back on that figure so I'll get that done as well while I've got the elastic and all of the sewing stuff out. With the goggle elastic you want to leave it a little bit longer than normal because ideally this has to uh, sort of fit over the German officer's hat and if you leave the elastic too small or too short uh, it won't fit neatly over the top of that so you can see that actually fits pretty uh, snugly. Now the, because the elastic's a bit longer if you put that onto something like the uh, Red Devil parachute uh, guy because it would go around his head the uh, goggles would be a bit loose but on this it works perfectly well so uh, that's all I'm going to do on that one. Now the last thing these helmets are missing are these stickers on each side. So I've got an original one here and I've taken the scans of these into Photoshop and with a little bit of work I sort of recreated them uh, so that they look as good as new really. Now the only difference in my uh, stickers is that this one on the left here has uh, been printed on some silver paper so it's got quite a nice sheen to the silver. I can't actually print onto coloured paper so I've printed mine onto white paper and uh, just made that bit a bit grey so you can see here yeah, this is what my ones look like compared to the original. Now you can buy reproduction ones of these online but uh, really with a restoration I like to try and do everything myself so uh, this is the best that I can do and you can see the other sticker is going to match quite nicely. Now I've also made 
a little sticker replacement for the iron cross which is another element to uh, this uh, restoration and I'll show you that in use later on but for now we've just got to cut out the uh, little uh, badges that go on either side so I've just got a pair of scissors here this has been printed onto glossy sticky backed printer paper uh, and really it's very easy to work with so I've just got to cut these out and we'll stick them onto the helmets so I've now got them all cut out. Uh, this file will be available for free from uh, toypolloy.com so if you want to print your own just go there and uh, follow the instructions really. It's a very simple way of doing this uh, fix and uh, it's something that you'll need if you're going to be restoring a similar sort of outfit. So I'm going to just place those on the side trying to line them up with the original. You can see that doesn't actually look too bad at all. If we turn that around and I'll put on the other little flag that we have on this side. So again, just grab that with a pair of tweezers. I'll line that up like so. So you can see that uh, makes quite a nice sort of finishing touch to the helmet. So I'm going to put the stickers on the last one, and then we can move on to another part of this restoration. So while I've been doing the work on the helmets, I've also in the background been sorting out the uniform. Now this uniform was not too sort of dirty, but it still needed a bit of a wash. So I've washed it in some hot soapy water. And you can see now that it's all been dried, the threads that are loose sort of and hanging around the edge are a lot easier to work with. So I've just got a pair of small scissors here and I can go around this uniform and trim off any loose threads. Now you'll see on these trousers that there are little bits of elastic that hook over the feet. One of them is fine and is in a loop still, and this one has come loose. So I've got to uh, sew that one together again, but it's an easy job. It's something I've shown you before as well, so I'm just going to re sort of sew that. Sometimes the elastic is perished and you'll need to replace it completely, but with this one, the elastic seems good, so that just needs a little bit of sewing. And on the jacket here, if I unhook all of the little press studs, we can see there's quite a lot of loose threads on the inside of this one. So again, I'm just going to work my way around the outfit and trim off these so that they don't hang down because it just makes the, the uniform look really messy. I would say this is a later issue uh, outfit just because the fabric used is quite thin. Some of the early issues of uh, this outfit, the, the fabric used is really nice and thick and sort of hangs quite nicely. This uh, latest issue ones just feel a little bit thin. They're obviously uh, sort of cutting, cutting their budgets on uh, the sort of fabric and stuff they were using. So. It certainly doesn't feel as good as the early ones, but still, once it's on the figure, it will look lovely. So you can see there's quite a lot of loose threads. And just tidying them up really sort of tidies up the outfit. Now most of this outfit looks fine. There doesn't seem to be anything that's sort of really unsewn on it. Sometimes the press studs are loose, but these all look like they're still held on. So really, I think the only fix that needs doing is to re-sew the elastic on these trousers and I'll uh, then get the uh, outfit back on the figure. So here's the undone little piece of elastic. I'm just going to try and catch that on the original. It's a bit of sewing on the other side and just do a few stitches through just so it's held back in place. Just enough because this, this all this does is catch on the foot and it make, sort of pulls the trousers down so that they, are, they go nice and snugly into the uh, boots. That should probably do it. So let's put this outfit back on the uh, figure and we'll see how it looks. As the feet come through, you can see you can hook them onto the pieces of elastic. This is the one that I've repaired. Hopefully that will fit over. And now when we pull the trousers up, they stay nice and sort of tight to the feet. If I bring the boots in, you can see that when you put the boots on, the trousers go nice and tightly down. So it works really well. Very good. 
The last bits we need for this outfit are all the accessories and as you can see there are quite a few accessories to go with these two figures. Now one thing that is often missing is the little map that comes in the map tube. I actually have quite a few of these map tubes but only one of them had the map inside. So what I've done is I've scanned this map in. I'll pull it out so you can see what it looks like. It's a very tiny piece of paper with a little map on it showing an airfield and all sorts of little details. So what I've done is I've scanned this in at nice high resolution and this will also be available for download from toyploy.com so if you're missing the uh, map you can print one out it just needs to be printed on some sort of reasonably good quality paper and cut out and that can go back in your map tube because really more often than not you'll find the tubes like this all empty and the other little sticker that I showed you earlier on the sticker sheet that again is available from toyploy.com is this tiny little piece here and that is for the iron cross now both of these figures should have this little iron cross uh, which has this sticker stuck on the top of it but as you can see this sticker is often damaged or missing so my uh, little replacement there will stick over the top of it you'll need to trim it to fit because sometimes these are slightly too big uh, but I've sort of given you a little bit of extra there so that it's easy enough to trim down now we can put all of these bits back onto the figures and see how they look and here are the final outfits as you can see with a little bit of work I've managed to get them looking really nice now some elements to this outfit are pretty hard to find in good condition the gun for the stormtrooper as you can see here I actually have a couple of other ones in a fairly terrible state all with bits broken uh, the gun is just one of those things that is designed to break I would say it's got lots of very thin pieces on it that are always going to snap off so it might take a little while to track down one of these that isn't broken but even still you can use this uh, broken version on the figure and it will look fine it's uh, taken me quite a long time to get one that isn't broken but uh, I've had these uh, ones on display on other figures for a while and it really doesn't look too bad and also the iron cross this little bit here seems to be particularly hard to find I'm still missing one for this figure so for the moment the staff officer has the correct badge and the eagle-eyed among you that is a pun obviously uh, will notice is that this uh, staff officer also has the wrong trousers on the, he should have some breeches which have a sort of uh, bit of a bulge on either side uh, but I haven't been able to find those so for the moment he's wearing sort of normal uh, German uh, trousers but at some point again I hope to find those and even still without those it still looks nice because having a different hat and different bits on the uniform it does make them look quite distinct so there you go I would say a big thank you to uh, Bruce Allen who very kindly donated these figures and a whole load of uniforms which I will cover in future videos and I hope this restoration has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So welcome to a little bit more of a sort of behind the scenes look at uh, Toy Ploy because I have a lot of people ask how I go about sourcing parts and what I do when I sort of I'm starting a restoration really the sort of behind the scenes process so recently I just received a sort of box of action men a donation from uh, Bruce Allen which included these three figures here which are figures I've now sort of got ready for uh, putting uniforms on uh, I haven't shown the sort of restoration of these because it's something I've shown many times before but as you can see they're sort of looking ready now there was a big box of uh, clothes included with these figures so I'll just show you that down here this is in my sort of working area so you can see there's a lot of figures there's inc included a Paul Stan from Kiss which you can see I'm actually also halfway through uh, working on so there's a little bit of uh, some of the stuff I'm working on there now in this box there were a couple of outfits uh, for the German Stormtrooper which I've managed to sort of sort of take all the pieces out so you can see here they've got two bags of German Stormtroopers and these are the outfits I want to restore in a future video so at the moment I'm trying to work out uh, what parts I'm missing and what parts I need to find I've got the sort of the basis of two outfits I've got uh, one German Stormtrooper and one staff officer all in fairly sort of uh, rough condition so they do need a fair amount of restoration if I just open this bag up you can see um, this is the helmet for the Stormtrooper which has been painted green. It should be that sort of grey colour on the inside. Uh, and there's also the uh, Staff Officer hat here. Same problem, that should be the sort of greeny colour on the inside and uh, it's been painted. But again, it's something that can be fixed. But really the first part of this process is for me to work out what bits I've got. So I use generally some reference books or go on the internet. So today I'm using uh, these uh, Action Man Collector's Guides. This is uh, Volume 2 from 1970. 
seven, oh, what was it, 1970 to 1977. These are by Alan Hall. This is a three sort of part series of books and it's very useful if you're doing action stuff because uh, it's got lots of good pictures about what each outfit should come with. So you can see here this is the Stormtrooper outfit and I know from this that I'm missing uh, the little badge. I think I have everything. The gun that I've got is broken but I have everything else. And for the uh, staff officer, if we go over this side, I have most of these things. I think uh, the only thing I'm really missing is these tiny little goggles. I actually, I know I have this map somewhere in another box, so I'm going to hunt that down. Again, I'm missing the tiny little badge there, but I have everything else. It's just in a sort of fairly tatty sort of condition. So really, this is my sort of first sort of thing that I do is just check to see what sort of parts I have uh, already and what pieces I need to track down. So really, the next stage is I'm going to have a quick look on eBay. I'm also going to ask around on some of the uh, Facebook groups that uh, uh, sort of there are a couple of collector groups for um, Action Man and see if anyone can help me out. Uh, you know, see if anyone's got for sale this uh, little pair of goggles here and I'll, I'll buy those parts. And that normally takes me a few weeks. So this process I'm doing today is a very early stage in a restoration. I'll just work out what I need and then try and find the parts which will take me you know, two to three weeks, sometimes sometimes longer. If I can't find the parts, then this restoration won't get filmed. But as far as it goes today, it's just working out what bits I need. So this is my other box of sort of spare Action Man parts. As you can see, it's sort of overflowing with the pieces. These are generally all fairly worn bits of clothing and things that need repairing. Uh, so I do think I have some extra bits for the uh, Stormtrooper outfits uh, in here. It's just a case of rummaging through. I try to sort of bag stuff up roughly into sort of what the sort of component parts are so I know what I'm looking for. Uh, I think I do have a bag with uh, just German sort of outfits in. Nothing's labelled so you can see there's a bag of shoes quite useful and then we have a bag of uh, weapons. I may be lucky and have another version of the German sort of uh, gun in there. Doesn't look like I do. That may be separated off and you can see there's all sorts of outfits, a couple of uh, boiler suits with toy ploy logos on. So I'm somewhere in here I do think there should be more parts. But as I say I sort of I try to organise this but you tend to sort of forget after a while what you've got. Especially when you're working on quite a lot of projects. You can see there's a bag of heads, always useful. sure there was something in here. It's always going to be the last thing I find. Oh, there you go. There is a bag of uh, parts for German officers and things. So let's see what's in this bag. Just move that out of the way. So can you see in there? Exciting stuff. So there is more bits in here. There's another sort of backpack for the uh, German guy. There is another gun. So that is something that I did need. But again, this one has been broken a few times, but it should do the job. And I think I can see the bit that I did need, or one of the pieces I needed, which was the tiny little map in the uh, that goes with the staff officer. And it looks like the map is in there as well. So there's a few bits uh, from the... Uh, that I need for the restoration. There's still a couple of bits missing like the goggles so I do have to go and hunt those down but my box of useful bits has uh, proved handy again so at least I've got some of the pieces that I needed. Now it's been a couple of days and I've actually uh, just received a few packages in the post of some bits I've ordered off uh, various uh, people that I know for this uh, restoration. As you can see here I've got the Iron Cross which was a piece I'm missing for the German officer. So that was one piece I bought and then also I needed the little goggles again for the German officer and so here's a set without the elastic but that's easy enough to uh, reproduce. I bought those off a, a friend of mine Joe Haynes who does uh, quite a lot of action man trading and that so uh, he's always got bits that I need. Also got a little strap here which is for another project and uh, another thing that I was missing which I bought from a place called uh, Vam Man well, what was it called here it's the uh, Vintage Action Man Restored website got in touch with them via their Facebook page and that uh, because they make replacement uh, what, what they call the lugs for the uh, helmets that these figures wear and that's one thing that was missing on uh, a couple of the uh, sort of German Stormtrooper helmets that I have so hopefully in here if I uh, have a look 
uh, should be some of the missing lugs. So there you go. These are the little bits that these straps uh, for the helmet sort of fit into. So uh, what they said to me was if I did a donation to Help for Heroes, they'd send me a couple uh, so that I could sort of review them in this video. And here they are, and they look pretty good. I was hoping I could actually make some out of Lego, but as they uh, already make these as reproductions, it seemed a bit silly, so I've uh, ordered them from there. So I think now I have everything I need uh, to start this restoration. So this is sort of the end of the little behind the scenes bit that uh, people have been asking for, see what happens, uh, you know, before I film a video. Uh, and it really is just a slow process of, I sort through the boxes I've got, see if I've got the parts, and then if I don't have the parts, I will sort of try and source them. And if it's, I can't source the parts, I will make them myself. But in this instance, I think these are the last bits I needed. And now I can get started on the project. So I'll get to film the proper video now.